Welcome to the first Sunday in June. Every month I know I say this, that I just can't believe how the time is going by, but here we are. So I have these lovely flowers that my daughter Heather gave me and I love them. So I love the idea of the yellow with the little red dainty ones here. So I had to just put them out for you to see. I'm gonna move them over. Because every time we see beautiful colors and beautiful flowers, at least I do, I think of summer coming, everything coming into bloom, things really opening up. It's a great time of year. And especially since I feel like we've been locked up for so long. Go ahead, Ben. Ben. I feel like we've been locked up for so long that now it's like, let's really take advantage of this summer and getting outside and having some movement and just being in a place where we can thrive. Because we, we never know what tomorrow's gonna bring as we've learned. And this is a time when it's really important for us to just live for today, get out. If it's a beautiful day, you know, I'm learning slowly, but surely that if it's nice out, is there something that I can, you know, if I was gonna clean or something, well, when the sun's out, that's when we should be out and, and find a way to, Get all your stuff done when it's raining or the weather's not that great out. So, or you want to be in because it's too hot out and you want the air on. But anyways, um, that's what comes to mind today. So when I think of June, I think of water. I think of being able to start really taking advantage of traveling a little bit and doing some of the things that we've been waiting to do. Hopefully it keeps going this way and things are clearing up and we're in a place of allowing ourselves to do that. So let's see what spirit has to say today. So I'm gonna start with the Oracle of E by Pam Grout and Colette Byron Reed. What would you like to tell everybody on this first week of June? Ooh, bunny hop jive. <laughs> These are funny. says, whoever said you had to do it alone, it's tea for two time. Friendships, partnerships, even party ships are bounding your way. It's time to join hands and do see -si do with your sisters and bros. Togetherness brings miracles now. And just as I read that, what I'm thinking of is just to remember that, you know, so many people come in and they're like, I can't meet anybody you know, with COVID and all of this. And I want you to think about this. This is a time when people are gonna start coming out again. So just being able to go for a walk, take a bike ride, do whatever you do that you love to do that gets you out. Um, and sometimes it's not even the obvious. Maybe you have a, you know, wedding to go to or something, keep your eyes open. You never know if you're single or looking uh, who you're going to meet, but this is saying that you can't do it alone. And certainly, I think of that a lot over the last year and a half and everything that's happened. If I didn't have the love and support from all of you, if you didn't feel supported in your world, it's, it's very difficult, right? So we need those nurturing and nourishing relationships that keep us going. And, um, Sometimes we like our own company and that's fine. But for me personally, I think I've had enough of it for now and I want to get back out there again. Um, I was laughing because my granddaughter's been, she's living in Colorado and she's been camping all over and by herself. And I said, aren't you afraid? Aren't you lonely? Because she's where there's bears and everything else. And she said, I have good company. And I said, I thought you were by yourself. She said, I am. That's my point. And I thought, well, good for you. 
So getting out there, meeting people, getting back to life again. The next deck is the Keepers of the Light Oracle Cards by Kyle Gray. Whoa. Oh, so funny. Well, I'm going to pull an extra one, too. This one hopped out. But let's look. What do you want to tell people on this first Sunday in June? Now, it's interesting because the first one, the one that hopped out is St. Germain, one of my favorite master teachers and guides. Karma re Releasing. Move beyond drama, create your own path, make room for good energy. And so St. Germain, you may or may not know, is the creator of the Violet Consuming Flame. Many, many, many years ago, when it looked like the earth was going to go down and we weren't going to be able to survive, St. Germain is the one that came before the karmic board. And he pleaded our case. He said, they can do it. They can pull it together. Give them another chance. And what is interesting is that he gave them, or gave us, a tool to use, which is called the Violet Consuming Flame. And imagine that you see flames everywhere, but they're violet. Remember, violet is the highest color and nothing else can um, survive in violet the crown chakra right so he has this tool because nothing can change or you know um with with the crown it's so important because you can't destroy energy it can only be transformed and that's what the violet flame does so if you have something negative or your house doesn't feel right you can invoke the violet consuming flame by just saying that. I invoke the violet consuming flame. And there's been times where I've pretended it's come out of my hand. And I've gone through all my walls in the room, the violet flame, especially for you that are energy workers that, you know, this is a tool you can use. It's free. It's easy. And um, you can put a situation into the violet flame. If you're, say you have a court case and you're worried about it, you can put it right into the violet flame. So the highest and best will come out of it. Okay. Whoops. Going by it here. All right. It says... Karma is the spiritual law of cause and effect. We experience many levels of karma. Some we inherit from our family and some from the people we in and some from the people that we are involved with. We keep helping people out of their problems. They keep creating. Saint Germain is here now to clear your energy so that you no longer have the weight of the world or your loved one's world on your shoulders. Be aware then that an old pattern is leaving your life and creating space for something more loving to enter. Visualize yourself surrounded by a fiery violet cloak to release all the karma you no longer need. Boy, I like the idea of that. Just imagine we're putting on his violet cloak that's just burning away any of the droth or any of the old energy and transforming it into positive. He's also very involved in um, sacred geometry. I don't know if you can see it there in the background, but a great time. He's had many roles in, um, in different lifetimes, and um, I believe he was Shakespeare. And they've, they've all come back to do different things in different times. The next one is Archangel Michael, trusting heaven. You are safe, angels stand alone. Sorry, angels stand close. I'm like, what? Um, surrender your concerns and allow a miracle to occur. So both of these cards has suggested a miracle. Look at that bright energy. 
Nice. Okay, let's see what Michael has to say for all of us this week. Your angel team is with you now. You are not in this alone. You may feel sensitive or overwhelmed, but your angels are inviting you to take a step back so they can come in and share your light of miracles. You may feel that your prayers aren't heard, but that doubts blocks solutions from entering your life. Know that Archangel Michael and his legions of angels are here to help clear anything that's not serving you so that you can allow in the miracles of change that you deserve, especially now, right? With everything going on, especially. We need a miracle to heal this earth. There's so many different aspects that you can see now that really need healing, you know? The earth itself, uh, the peoples, the children, all of it. Okay, the next deck is the Enchanted Map by Colette Byron Reed. Cleaning house. All oh, this is funny. Cleaning house. Well, it's so funny because I've been saying that I've got to get to do my heavy duty cleaning that I do every spring, summer, and I haven't had time to do it yet. And I'm like, okay, do I take a week off and just wash the walls and get everything done, curtains and stuff? For me, it's not that my house is dirty, it's it's energy, right? If I'm reading for people, if people are coming through here just recently, it's like, you know, that energy. We, I use the violet flame, I use sage, I use all of that. But this is saying that cleansing and clearing your house. And it's funny because there's a, some little funny spirit here with a broom and you know, in older days, people just swept through their whole house and then out the door. That's a real ritual because you're getting rid of the energy and there's something about sweeping it out the front, cleaning a pathway. So, and then when our, when our parents used to do all of that spring cleaning and everything, that was a form of meditation for them. And at some level, they knew about energy, even though they may not have been conscious about it what to do and how to change it and all of that. So this says, when you see the cleaning house card, it's time to declutter your life, get rid of unwanted things in your physical home and release that what you no longer want or truly need. Is there any unfinished business you should address? Thoughts, memories, emotional baggage must be swept out of your house as well. Your conscious must be clear for you to move freely in the world. Celebrate a spring cleaning and feel the freedom as you make way for much better things. Look at what you've resisted discarding and be honest about its value. Be honest and clean house. Well, if we're talking about the energetics of things, totally. You all know, and I'm sure with feng shui, many of you know, that everything holds energy, right? And so if you have a wedding album of your, you know, you've been since divorced and you're holding on to the wedding album. You're holding on to all that energy. It's the first thing I did when I got divorced is I gave my kids the wedding album. It's like, here you go, clean it out, get rid of the dress, get rid of this and that. Otherwise, it's almost like you still have one foot in that world. Okay, so we wanna start looking at it from that perspective, pictures, of things that happened in your life that weren't so great, but you're remembering, it's like, get rid of them. Um, and burning things are good, like if old pictures and things like that that you no longer want, or is there someone else in the picture that would love to have that? For you, it might be a bad memory, and for your kids are like, oh, this is when my parents got married and all of that. And also be in a place where you can look at the energy that everything holds. You know, when you pick something up and you feel it, do I love this? If not, there's a bunch of things, you know, giving it to somebody else, getting rid of it, or just getting it out of your house. One less thing to clean or that's taking up space. And um, 
at some point in the future, we want to move. And when that happens, I've got to start soon going through. You know how you go through things in layers, like you might have uh, really cleaned up something for a while and, you know, got rid of clothes and whatever. And now it's that time of year where you're changing clothes again and you're putting your summer clothes in your closet. And you're like, oh, when's the last time I wore this? I don't even like it anymore. Somebody else is dying to have that. So pay attention. Maybe that's the wrong word, dying. Who's excited to have it? Pay attention to that and clean out. If you haven't used it in the last two years, you're not going to. And as you clean out, it creates a vacuum for other things to come into your life. Not necessarily clutter, but other things coming into your life. All right, the goddess deck, goddess power deck by Colette. I tend to gravitate to the same authors of decks, <laughs> if that's what you call it. All right, for the first Sunday and the up and coming week, what is the, whoa, whoa. Oh my, we have five cards up. So I think that was just me being clumsy. So I am going to do these over. Sorry about that. Let's try this again. Ooh, this beautiful goddess. I'm not sure how you say your name. It's A-I-N-E. And it's adaptability. Look at those beautiful greens. Makes you think of things blooming this time of year and the colors. Awesome. All right. Oh, she's number one in the deck. Where is one? Okay, this is interesting. Here she is. Empowerment message. When, you're, when you set intentions for how your life could be different, better, fuller, juicier, prosperous, creative, more meaningful, etc. Adaptability is the power you'll need to rely on. The old familiar you, the one who is used to your comfort zone, is now invited to dance in uncharted territory. Doesn't that sound lovely? The questions to ask yourself as you step into the unknown are, who do I need to become in order to experience the life I desire? That's a great one. What in me needs to shift so I can welcome this amazing abundance? Wow. Know you have everything you need right now. You are aligned with the Celtic shapeshifter goddess who could move effortlessly between our world and the world of the fairy. Her power of adaptability is sparkling within you. Magic is afoot. Alignment message. Sometimes you find yourself unable to respond to life's challenges because you are holding on too tightly to an image of how things should be. It's hard to adapt to changing circumstances when you are so connected to familiar conditions or attracted to your old identity. Or you may be too attached to the form of your desired outcome and when things go in different directions, you resist. Boy, if that isn't true, right? We want what we want. We want our outcome, not somebody else's. Have no fear. Instead, love these changes. Be open and curious. Call on this goddess to embody her power. Remember, she could effortlessly shift from one form to another and move between worlds without consequence. Trust that whatever you're bumping up against will dissolve through your willingness to simply be with what is and allow the magic to reveal itself. Boy, that's a big message, to be with what is. It's so important, right? 
that we have to be comfortable with our surroundings and what's happening. Is my life 100% perfect? Absolutely not. Is it good? Yes, it is. I could stand to get some of this weight, more weight off. I've lost 16 pounds and I'm still like struggling now, but I'm, I tend to focus. I'm not there yet on the scale instead of going, wow, I've come this far. So as we look at this week, get out there, get in nature, make friends, do things that where you're going to meet new people. And then I want to put the St. Germain with the karma cleansing with the cleaning house one. It's like use, it almost feels to me like get rid, go through each room, one room at a time. Because you know how that goes. I, if you're like me, I don't like the whole house torn apart. So do one area at a time or one room at a time and go through everything. Do I really, you know, would I be able to live without this? And allowing yourself to just get rid of. I've also seen where people for holidays have re-gifted things, you know, with people knowing that they were going to do that, that, you know, you've always loved this. I'm moving it on. Here you go. And then after you cleanse, both physically cleaning your house and decluttering, then you go through with the violet flame and you work on yourself too. I'm releasing my own karma. And then Archangel Michael, knowing that he's there to protect us. He's there. He's the Blu-ray for us to speak our truth. All of that. Be authentic. And then adaptability. Knowing that we have to adapt to our surroundings. We're spirit beings, right? We're these wonderful beings that have come to this density to try to help others and the earth herself make the shift. Well, we're doing it, folks. We have to continue to adapt to what's important, but we're doing it. And you know what? I feel like we're at the end of the road coming. It feels like for me personally, I'll speak for me. It feels like we've been doing this for so long that it's exhausting. And yet, would we have it any other way? Absolutely not. I'm here. You're here. We're in service. We're here to help people transform and shift and remember. Remember who you are. Because if you think you're just your name and this is your first time around it's not remember you're here for service i'm sorry i forgot to take the phone out and ask yourself every day how may i best serve whatever that means to you sometimes you are sitting by the ocean sending healing to the ocean that's serving so whatever it is stretch it this week and see how you may serve. And remember, you might want to get yourself some beautiful flowers or be gardening. I love them. And I love you. Please take care. And remember, you're in charge. So make it a great week. Bye-bye.